Hello my dear geographers I hope everyone is keeping well so once again welcome back to our geography class today in this class i am going to teach one of the important topics of class 10 icsc that is the need for waste management if you have seen in my last class i have discussed about the definition of waste the different sources of waste and the various impacts of the waste accumulation so those who have not seen the video for them definitely i'll put the link in my description box So without any further delay let's move on to today's topic. So as i told you our topic is need for waste management like why why we need to manage this kind of waste. So here topic wise we will discuss. So let's try to recall what do we understand by waste. So basically waste is that kind of substance which is rejected which is completely worthless and which does not have any good impact on our environment so here the problem with the waste is that it remains in our environment we throw we move the waste from one place to another place but never get rid of this now that nature has recycled the waste materials for millions of years however as we all know that human population has increased so rapidly during the last century that the environment is now threatened by our activities and the waste they produce much damage is done to the environment by the pollution of air degradation of soil and obviously the contamination of water sources such as rivers lakes etc Now the transmission of diseases obviously waste is also associated with the disease so here first let's discuss about the waste on land so various diseases spread on an epidemic scale due to some waste accumulation on land and water bodies as well now the vectors like flies mosquitoes rodents and pet animals they transmit this diseases So here is a list of common disease spread by mosquitoes, flies, rodents and other pet animals. Basically house fly they are responsible for typhoid, cholera, diarrhea, uh, diarrhea etc. Sand fly for kalajar, sand fly fever, mosquitoes for obviously dengue, malaria, chikungunya. Now rodents they are responsible for plague and other diseases. Now the waste in water body. Obviously the water without human interference is in its pure form but when the waste is getting mixed with the water obviously it will start polluting now the industrialization and urbanization pollute the water in the following manner how sea waste contains the organic matter which cannot be decomposed beside the sea waste has the pathogenic agents also Now there are industrial and commercial waste which has toxic agents including the metal salts the complex synthetic organic chemicals etc fertilizers and pesticides they produce the pollutants and there are other pollutants like radioactive substances etc so the human beings are highly affected by such pollution by drinking the contaminated water by using the contaminated water for the their personal use and etc There are some common waterborne diseases there that is cholera typhoid dysentery etc diarrhea is also there now let's discuss about the greenhouse effect and the global warming nowadays in the present era we all are quite acquainted with this word global warming now the rate of absorption of solar radiation by earth and its emission back into the space as infrared waves balances the heat on the earth okay so this phenomenon plays a very important role in maintaining the surface temperature of the earth but the carbon dioxide and the other gases they form a blanket around the globe which generally prevents the passage of this uh, infrared waves from the earth back into the space so the concentration of solar radiation produces much heat making the earth a very warm place and this phenomenon is similar to that of a greenhouse in which the glass enclosed area gets heated up due to the insulation from the rest of the environment the warm up of the atmosphere is due to the greenhouse effect known as global warming 
Now there are some major greenhouse gases present in our environment. Number one, carbon dioxide, then methane, then nitrous oxide, after that chlorofluorocarbon or CFC and the water vapor. So basically human activities like uh, burning of fossil fuels increase the carbon dioxide. The increased concentration of carbon dioxide may bring about the drastic changes in the world climate, right? Now, what are the consequences of such global warming? Basically, global temperature is likely to rise by 2 degree centigrade to 5 degree centigrade uh, in during the last or during the next century due to the rise in temperature by 2 degree to 5 degree so there is a chance of melting of ice caps on the earth's pole we all know that when the temperature will be increased then obviously the ice that is present on the top of the mountains they will start melting as the increase in the temperature will be uniform all over the surface of the world so there will be various climatic changes uh, which will be very serious and this will bring various changes in the wind pattern as well as in the rain pattern. Higher temperature will cause rise in transpiration which in turn will affect the groundwater table also and then the insects and pets will also increase in the warmer climatic conditions and the pathogenic diseases will multiply. So this is the basic consequences or effects of global warming. Now next is the depletion of ozone layer. So we all know there are various layers in our environment or in our atmosphere. Now in the second layer that is stratosphere. So what are the layers? Troposphere, stratosphere, ionosphere, exosphere etc. So in the second layer that is stratosphere which lies at the height of 20 km to 50 km which form the earth's surface lies the ozone layer. In spite of its low density, the ozone layer plays an important role in our life. So now due to the presence of ozone layer, the UV rays or ultraviolet rays and the infrared rays from the sun cannot reach to the earth's surface directly. So ozone layer absorbs the harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun and protects the life on the earth from their harmful effects. But the sad news is nowadays the ozone layer is also depleting. Why so? Because of some greenhouse gases. So basically it has been revealed from various research that when the oxides of nitrogen come in contact with ozone, their chemical reaction basically destroys the ozone layer. Beside this, there are supersonic aeroplanes move through the stratosphere and emit huge amount of nitrogen gas which generally depletes the ozone layer. Another important factor we all know that that is CFC or chlorofluorocarbon, right? So basically all the developed as well as the developing countries nowadays they are using the CFCs type of chemicals as refrigerated in aerosol in uh, like they all are using air conditioners, some perfumes, sprays, etc. And there is a high concentration of such gas in that product. So during the use of such materials, a lot of CSCs ultimately get dispersed into the atmosphere. So now, due to this, a hole has been observed in the ozone layer in the stratosphere near Antarctica. Now let's discuss what are the different effects of this ozone layer depletion. So number one, this hole allows the ultraviolet rays of the sun to reach the earth directly without any obstacle or filtration. So this ultraviolet rays cause many diseases like skin cancer, cataract, etc. The ultraviolet rays also cause some genetic disorders which ultimately affect the heredity. Now increased concentration of ultraviolet rays disturb the ecological balance in marine ecosystem. Vegetables are very much sensitive to such ultraviolet rays and it can damage the physical as well as the chemical properties of any complex chemical substance. So these are the effects of ozone depletion. Now the most important thing is acid rain. So what is acid rain? Acid rain means the presence of excessive acids in rainwater. Now the burning of coal, wood or petroleum produce sulfur, nitrogen. 
So these two react with oxygen and are converted into their respective oxides like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide which are very much soluble in water. Now during rain these oxides react with large quantities of water vapor in the atmosphere to form the acids. What are the acids? Sulfuric acid and nitric acids. So these acids when they like precipitate together with rain or snow they form the acid rain. Now the major topic from this portion is the effect of acid rain. This is very very important. Now the acid rain basically increases the acidity in the soil and destroys the forest and crops. It poses a serious threat to human life as well. It affects the human nervous system by causing the, some neurological diseases. Aquatic species like the species who live in uh, aqua like in live under the water body they are also affected due to the acid rain and acid rain affects the plant growth and the plant leaves get burnt and dry. So these are the basic features or basic effects of such waste. So to stop all this, to prevent all this, we need to uh, like manage this waste and we need to conserve our environment. So this is all about today's chapter, today's topic. So in the next class, I will again come with the new topic of class 10. So till then, thank you and take